all we went really learned or um, came from last class period is we just kind of looked at still solving trigonometric equations, but now we looked at finding all the solutions rather than the solutions that were just on the um, first quadrant. So the big mistake that a lot of students made with this is some students wanted to like divide by one or divide by cosine of x or something like that. The main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, when, we're, when we have an equation with our variables, we got to get our variables all to the same side, right? And see if we can either combine them, isolate them, or you know anything. So I'm going to subtract a cosine of x to both sides. I don't want to divide out the x because that's going to leave out solutions um, to my equation. So therefore, I have cosine cubed of x minus cosine of x equals 0. So now we look at this. We can't combine these because this is cosine cubed and this is cosine of x. So we can't combine our cosines. We need to look at a different way that we can solve. And the common way to look at this when we have um, multiple terms and they equal to 0, we want to say, can we rewrite this as a product to equal 0? So therefore, I can use the 0 product property. So what I look at is I factor out a cosine of x, which leaves me with a cosine squared of x minus 1 equals 0. Okay. Now I have cosine of x times cosine squared of x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, by applying the 0 product property, I can say the cosine of x equals 0 and the cosine squared of x minus 1 equals 0. So now solving. Um, so now I have cosine equals plus or minus 1, and then cosine of x equals 0. So now what we need to do is look at our unit circle and determine when is cosine of x equal to 0, and when is our cosine of x equal to plus or minus 1. Now let's put it over here. So let's kind of look at our main important points. We have 1 comma 0, 0 comma 1, negative 1 comma 0, and we have 0 comma negative 1. Right? So we can say that cosine equals 0 at my angle here and there. Right? So you could say x equals, so the value of cosine when it equals 0 is when x equals pi halves and x equals 3 pi halves. Make sense? OK. Then let's look at when is cosine equal plus or minus uh, 1. Well, you could say cosine equals plus or minus 1. It equals there at this angle, which is pi, and then going back over to that angle, which would be like 2 pi, right? But the thing is, we're not limiting this just to our unit circle. Because if my angle equals it here, if I was to continue going around, would that still be equal, that angle, if I go all the way around again? Is it cosine still equal to 0? Yes. So I'm not now, I'm not limiting it to just the unit circle. I'm limiting it to however many revolutions you want to go around. Let me put it to you this way. This is what we looked into last class period. We looked at the graph of cosine. The graph of cosine looks like this, right? Goes on and on and on forever. 0 to 2 pi is right here, right? That's only, that's like the first, that's like the unit circle right there. Now, you've learned just to find values between 0 and 2 pi. Now, I'm opening it up to the whole graph, all positive and all negative values. So let's take a look at when does, um, when does your cosine equal 0? Well, it equals 0 at pi halves and at 3 pi halves, right? That's when your cosine of x equals 0, your output. But does it also equal 0 here and here and here? Is it still equal to 0 all those places? Is your output value equal to 0 at all those places? Yeah. What about here? Yeah, here. Yes. When does cosine equal 1? Well, it equals here, which was 0. It equals here, which is 2 pi, right? But it also equals 0 here and here, right? And it equals negative pi here, negative pi at pi, 
and then it equals there. All right, so there's all these different angles, right? It's just not these angles that I've written in there. So what we need to do is we need a way to include all of the solutions. So the way that we're going to write it is my first solution is going to be at 3 pi over 2. Oh, actually, wait a minute. I did give you constraints on this one, didn't I? OK. I'll go and finish up the homework quiz, and then I'll explain what we learned in last class period. Sorry. For your homework, all you guys had to do was just tell me where they were on the unit circle. So you had your answers, pi halves, 3 pi halves, and then you can just say x equals 0 and x equals um, pi. For your homework, that's all you guys had to do. Last class period, what we learned is how to write all the solutions. So to write all the solutions, if you notice, if I go, here's my first angle, right? To get to my next solution, which was pi, I have to add what? Pi over 4. Right? Then to get to my next solution, I have to add what? Pi over 4. And then pi over 4. And I can keep on adding pi over 4, and I'm always going to get a solution to my equation. Do you see that? All right. Here is a solution, right? This is when cosine equals 0. That is a solution. Here is a solution. This is when cosine equals negative 1, right? To go from angle to here to here. This is a solution. This is when cosine equals 0 again. Here is a solution. Here is when cosine equals 1. So every axis, every angle on an axis is a solution. So what's the, what's the distance between each angle? Pi over 4. So if you just say, x, rather than writing out all these solutions, now I'm going past the unit circle, I could say there is a solution at x equals pi over 4 times n, where n is going to be any real number. If you multiply n times 1, you're at this solution. If you multiply by, um, I'm sorry, not pi over 4, pi halves, sorry. Not pi over 4, it's pi halves. If you multiply pi halves times n, you get to here. If you multiply it by 2, you get to here. Multiply it by 3, you get here. <coughs> multiply it by 4, here. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You can do it infinite many times for the graph. The number, you just put okay. No, not necessarily. There's different scenarios that we'll have to go and take a look at. I have a question. Okay. 